Well, hi kids. Uh, good to see you uh, again. Uh, I'm Steve and I'm going to be continuing to read through uh, the Jesus Story Book Bible. Uh, you might notice that I've been joined uh, this evening by some more friends. We've got Armand here, who you know, um, and uh, I'm sitting next to this one, Pancake, who seems to have you know, just taken up most of my seat. And uh, I wonder if you can spot some other animals that might be lurking uh, around. And we've got lots of animals around this evening because in our story, there are lots of animals. I wonder if you could possibly guess what it is. It's called a new beginning. So if you're sitting comfortably, uh, let me start. Time passed and many people filled the earth. Everyone everywhere had forgotten about God and were only doing bad things all the time. God's heart was filled with pain when he saw what had happened to the world he loved. Everywhere was disease and death and destruction. All the things that God hates most. Now Noah was God's friend, which was odd in those days because no one else was. Noah listened to God, he talked to God, he just loved being with God like you do with your best friend. Noah, God said, things have gone wrong. People have filled my world with hate instead of love. They're destroying themselves and each other and my world. I must stop them. First, we'll build an ark. Do you know how to build an ark, Pancake? Do you know how to build an ark? Pancake doesn't know. Neither did Noah. But luckily, God knew and he would show him. A storm is coming, God told Noah. But I will rescue you, I promise. I'll send the animals to you, ones that creep and crawl, and slither and slime and gallop and hop and bound and climb and don't forget to pack everyone's food. The storm was going to wash away all the hate and sadness that had gone wrong and make the world clean again. God had thought up a way to keep Noah safe, but Noah would have to trust God and do exactly what God told him. So Noah built an ark, short for a very large boat. Noah's neighbours came out to watch and point and laugh because they didn't believe Noah about the boat or the storm or needing to be rescued. And Noah must have looked rather silly. His boat was in the desert. The desert was nowhere near the sea and there wasn't even a cloud in the sky. Why would anyone need an umbrella, let alone a boat? But Noah didn't mind so much what other people thought. He minded what God thought. So he just did what God told him to do. When the ark was ready, God said, All aboard! And Noah's family and all the animals climbed inside. Then God shut the door. And it started raining. For minutes, that joined up into hours, that joined up into days, that joined up into weeks and weeks, and the rain joined up into puddles, that joined up into rivers, that joined up into lakes, that joined up into a flood that covered the whole world. Their boat that had once seemed so big suddenly seemed very small. But in the middle of the huge storm, in the crashing waves, in all the thunder and lightning, through it all God was with them. And God kept them safe for 40 long days and 40 long nights. Finally, the rain stopped, the sun came out, and Noah threw open all the windows. Hooray! Everyone shouted. Noah sent his dove out to explore, and it wasn't long before she brought him back a fresh olive leaf. Everyone knew exactly what that meant. She'd found a tree and land. The water was going down. At last, the boat landed quite suddenly on top of a great mountain. As soon as it was safe, God said, Out you come. And so they did, everyone skipping and dancing onto dry land. The first thing Noah did was to thank God for rescuing them 
just as he had promised. And the first thing God did was make another promise. I won't ever destroy the world again. And like a warrior who puts away his bow and arrow at the end of a great battle, God said, see, I've hung up my bow in the clouds. And there in the clouds, just where the storm meets the sun, was a beautiful bow made of light. It was a new beginning in God's world. But it wasn't long before everything went wrong again. But God wasn't surprised. He knew this would happen. That's why, before the beginning of time, he had another plan, a better plan. A plan not to destroy the world, but to rescue it. A plan to one day send his own son, the rescuer. God's strong anger against hate and sadness and death would come down once more, but not on his people or his world. No, God's war bow was not pointing down at his people. It was pointing up into the heart of heaven. Well, I wonder if you noticed in that story uh, the rainbow. And rainbows uh, are around a lot at the moment, aren't they? Maybe you've drawn one and put it on your window. But why have we done that? What, what has the rainbow got to do with anything? Well, we're told what the rainbow symbolises here. That's where the idea of a rainbow being about hope came from the Bible. You see, the rainbow in the sky was a sign from God of his faithfulness, that he keeps his promises, that he's with us. And so the next time you see a rainbow in the sky, remember God's love for you, his faithfulness to you, and that he keeps his promises. Well, I believe it's probably time for sleep. Pancake is is getting weary and I can already see uh, she's starting to fall asleep. So let me wish you a good night, uh, a good rest, and hope that you'll be able to join in tomorrow evening. Good night.